Hello everyone and welcome back to our online service, our English service here at Glow Fellowship Centre. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Moselle and I'll be sharing a message for you today. Did everyone have a great Passover weekend last week? I know it was a bit different. We attended church online and we did everything at home, but we had, like, it wasn't it a special Easter and we could be together at home celebrating Easter. So today I'm actually going to talk about relationship reality check. But before we begin, let's bow our heads in prayer and then we'll follow on with worship. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that even though we are limited together physically, that we could connect and listen to your word digitally. Father, as the service goes on, we pray that our hearts may be open and ready to receive your word. Help us to understand your word and be able to apply it into our everyday lives. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so our worship team is going to lead us into worship. Relationship reality check. I'm sure everyone watching right now has been in a situation where the relationship maybe went south, the relationship wasn't for them, and relationships could be everything, anything. It's not just limited to dating, it could be a friendship with someone, with a work colleague, with a school friend, university friend, it could be a relationship with a client or a business partner. But there's many cases where we've experienced the relationship ended up not being healthy for us. Maybe some of you are currently in a relationship that you know is actually not good for you, but you're still in it anyway. But to put it simply, there is, I guess we could say there are good relationships and there are bad relationships. And how do you distinguish them? What, what differs them? So a good relationship, I believe, maybe if you guys could write this down, healthy relationship actually pushes you towards God, whereas an unhealthy relationship, a bad relationship, actually pulls you away from God. That's a very simple way to determine if your relationship is healthy or not. 
Often, when God wants to bless us, He'll use people. God can bless us through many different kinds of people, but then the same in reverse. The enemy knows us really well. And if He wants to curse us, He could also send people our way. And often that's where we go wrong and we step into the wrong relationships. So if you could examine your life right now and write down a list of actually what relationships are you in right now, who's actually adding value to you or who's actually putting taking value away from you and making you worse off than you started. So my my point number one is how do we know when a relationship, when you need to call quits on a relationship? So number one reason is God didn't birth the relationship. The relationship started out of your impatience. God has a plan for you and you do not need to meddle in his plan for you just because you're impatient because trust me, God doesn't need your help. Before you were even born, while you were still knitted in your mother's womb, God had already created a plan for you. He already created a race ahead of you. And all you had to do was just wait on him. But so many of you are impatient. So many of you are are not willing to wait. You don't see the beauty in waiting. So instead, what do you do? Out of your impatience, you actually put yourself and you enter and start relationships instead of waiting on God. But there is actually beauty in waiting on God. But for those of you who didn't, and for those of you who started these relationships, you've realized down this track, oh wait, I actually ended up having more damage than I did when I first started. And none of that damage was actually intended for you. So if you actually go through and open up your Bible to Romans 12, verse 2. um, Today I'll be reading from the NLT translation, New Living Translation. It says... Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God, okay, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. So like I said, God already has a will for you. Why would you want to meddle with that? So instead, we should just be patient and enjoy and just wait on God's will for us because God's will is always greater than we could ever imagine. Sometimes we're a bit stubborn though and the wait is too long and sometimes you just want a quick fix then and there. Sometimes maybe you're waiting on a business plan and some, a really great opportunity comes up and you're like, okay, I'll take it. And then you take it and then sometimes it you know, doesn't go out the way you plan or maybe not a, business rela- um, not a business situation but maybe this happens in your friendship. So I'll share a testimony where this happened with a, with a young girl. Um, she's a young adult. And she actually went through, after the relationship, after the friendship she made, she went through so many insecurities that she didn't actually have from the start. And these insecurities were never intended for her for the, to begin with because it wasn't God who started the relationship. So she's going through, I don't know, her young adult, her young adolescence life and She's, she's waiting for a, t- a turn to um, a corner to turn, and then during her impatience, she's like, "Oh, these people are having so much fun in their youth. I really, I really just want to try that." And then so she started. She started hanging out, hanging around these people. She started having a different surrounding. But key word is that she started this. God didn't. And then during that time, she started drinking alcohol, which is something she would never have done before. She started having really foul language. She started getting into the wrong into the wrong communities, into the wrong groups. And then later she was real she realized that this is actually damaging her and actually damaging her spirit. But she enjoyed it. She actually ignored that. She enjoyed it because she thought, oh, this is such a great temporary fix for me. I feel great. But she didn't care that the fix was actually temporary. All these pleasures you feel now because you, you've started this relationship and, you, and, you in, and you're enjoying the ride, you actually had let, because you were impatient and you didn't wait on God, you actually let the devil, the enemy, sleep through. And then now you're oblivious to the fact that what his plan was for you was actually greater. But I have another testimony where this guy actually started dating a girl that was outside of his faith. So he was... Um, you know, Christian came from a great Christian household, but then he, you know, as he grew older, he was feeling lonely. 
and he didn't have that much luck with the ladies. So one lady came along and she was great. She was beautiful. He was trapped by her beauty and he really got on with her. But then he started the relationship with her. He was like, God, I'm done waiting. But this woman, she's so great. I'm just going to go for it. So he went for it. But actually, it didn't work out well because because she was she was not she was a non-believer. You see, so the Bible says, "Do not be unequally yoked." So they fell into so many problems in their relationships, and then after dating a while, they broke up, and then both of them were hurt. Each of them were each equally damaged, and that was all because he didn't wait on God. He just said, "No, nah, I want to start now. I I mean, I'm too impatient." So what does that teach us? We should just wait on what God has in store. My next point is actually ask God and seek his will. So if you open up to Hebrews 12 verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. So in other words, his plan that he's already set for us before we were even here. So who's slowing you down right now? What relationships are you in right now that's slowing you down and and distracting you away from God's will for you? Let's open up again to 1 Corinthians 15, 33. So I used to always, always hear that bad company corrupts good character, but that actually came from the Bible. See, it says, Don't be fooled by, the, by those who say such things, for bad company corrupts good character. God, don't you just love the Bible? The, two, the three verses that we've just read, they apply to us right now. They were written so long ago, but they reply, apply to us right now. The Bible is that relevant. So that scripture is just like the testimony I shared. Sometimes in our way, we allow the enemy to, we allow ourselves to believe that there is no point waiting and we can have all the fun we want right now. We can start relationships now. We can be oblivious to the fact that these relationships are actually only giving us temporary pleasure. But the damage that these relationships leaves us afterwards are actually a lot longer than these temporary places. None of this pain, none of this damage that you experience is actually ever intended for you had you just waited on God. So an unhealthy relationship, as 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, an unhealthy relationship is not one-sided. An unhealthy relationship actually damages both you and the person involved. So for example, if you're a teenager or if you're a person who's never done drugs before and then all of a sudden you become, you start a friendship with someone who does and then you get into it, you're not helping yourself. You've actually just started something that you've never done before. And then this person's also being damaged because they're not stopping, they're continuing and they're encouraging others to do so. So the Bible's right where it says good character, um, sorry, bad company corrupts good character. Just keep some godly relationships. That's such a key here. All right, so... The topic, the point said, ask God and seek God's will. So I think a reminder for everybody is just something easy that we could all do is just picture that you're standing on a crossroad, right? So in the beginning, we talked about bad versus good. And we know that all good things come from God and all bad doesn't. If something comes your way, a business opportunity, a new client, a new friend, a relationship, maybe your fiancé or maybe your boyfriend or girlfriend. When that, when that situation comes, question first. Seek God's will, ask God, and then once you've done that, decide. All right, am I going to start it or am I not going to start it? If it's God's will, go ahead. But if it's not God's will, it's all right. Just close that door. There'll be other doors God's going to open for you. Just be patient. It's so easy, actually, for you guys to make. Some of you guys are like, oh, but it's not, not as easy as you think. I've been waiting for so long. I've been, I've been through all this heartache. I just want a quick fix. I just want to start now. I just want to be in control of my life. This, this is something that is, that's easy that might apply to Mills, the modern day people. It's like an online dating app. It's so easy for you to swipe left, swipe right. I don't actually know which one's the way you're accepting, which one's not, but I know you swipe. So it's just like that. When someone comes your way, you're either going to swipe left or swipe right. But first, you're going to ask God and you're going to seek his will, right? 
because if God didn't start it, I don't want it. All right, why is that? That brings me to point three. God sees all things. God actually sees what we don't see. Sometimes something comes our way and we think, okay, this is good. And then maybe we also think, oh no, this is, this is God's plan for me and we go with it and it doesn't turn out that way. Why? It's because we actually can't see beyond that. Sometimes we can, sometimes you can be that analytical and you can predict, okay, this could happen, this could happen, but no, we, God actually sees far greater than you can ever see. Remember, he already wrote your story before you entered. Do not lean on your own understanding and think that this is good for me because God sees beyond that. We need to be able to trust his will. Let me, let me just end with this last scripture here. Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. That's like the path we were talking about earlier. You're going to take this one or this one, but before you do that, you're going to seek his will. It's so, so simple, but when you actually break it down and when you think about it, how many of us have been in a situation where It didn't go that way. We just went ahead and did it. When you're out there looking, you should be surrounding yourself with those who are more spiritually mature than you, with those who are greater than you, because you actually... Did your mother, like, ever tell you at school that don't don't hang around with these people because the crowd that you hang around with tend to gonna copy their traits? Well, it's the same. I've been in a situation where I surrounded myself with some people and then they had bad characteristics and I know that I noticed some of those were rubbing off on me but then the second I left the second I put myself into serving at church the second I put myself into a connect group the second I was serving it was all different after I was focusing on seeking God's will the people that were surrounding me I was rubbing off on their goodness and I didn't have to suffer the damage that was not intended for me So when I first started out ministry here actually at GLOW, I remember a day, I was actually, I started ministry at GLOW alongside my husband at the time, he was my boyfriend, and we were at the church office, and he gets a lot of invitations, I'll admit. So invitations were coming through, and then I was looking at him, and some were accepted, and some were politely not. And I didn't understand. I thought, oh, some of these were great opportunities. But, you know, I kept quiet. I trust him. But someone spoke up in the room. And they said, hang on a second. Why are you not accepting these invitations? And I'll never forget what he said. My husband actually said, it's not about what I want. It's not about what opportunity I think is great. It's about where God wants me and where God wills me. I will never, ever, ever forget that. From that day, I took away so much I actually started practicing what my husband taught me. It's not about what you want or what you think is good or what you think you need. We have a creator who knows so much more than us, sees beyond everything. Do you think he's not offended? Like, I'm now a parent. I have my son over there. I now know how it feels. Well, now I know how my parents feel. You have this child and you know better Like, I know that this will hurt my child. I know if my son touches that knife, he's going to get cut. But he's too young to understand that. He's not mature enough to understand that. I'm not going to go let him cut. I'm going to stop him, right? But, yeah, so he doesn't understand that. And sometimes, for you maybe, your parents, you want to do something and then your parents say no. And then you think it's so unfair and you think, oh, my God, they don't understand me. They're so mean. I just want to have fun. No, they understand you. They actually see beyond what you do. And I was thinking about this the other day. I was looking at my son and I was thinking, that's exactly like God. That's like God in us. He sees so far beyond everything. He knows everything already. But yet, we still rebel against him. We still don't trust him. Or we do trust him, but we're impatient. And then we just say, oh, no, 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 it's okay. And then we let the enemy distract us because he is offering something now, something fun. But it doesn't work like that. I think a lot of you are watching right now have experienced this, but if not, you're actually going through bad company yourself right now. Maybe you don't even realize it. Maybe this message made you realize today, oh, right, this 
is not adding value to me. This friendship is actually pulling me away from God. Keep godly relationships. This is just a suggestion, okay? I know sometimes people have said, oh, but I've, I've been in a relationship with someone and it actually made me a better person. Oh, no, it didn't. Before it made you a better person, you, you went through depression, you went through suicidal thoughts, you went through drugs, you went through alcohol, you went through all of that. And then you realized, but no, when you went through all of that, none of that was ever intended for you. So you didn't have to go through that in the first place. You just had to stand at the crossroad and decide which path you're going to take after you ask God and seek his will for you. I actually want to pray. Let's pray for everyone online right now. I want to pray for you because I feel like a lot of you are mixed in bad company. You don't know how to get yourself out. Or or maybe some of you have forgotten that God's will is actually greater than you can ever imagine. I know the wait is long, okay? But it's going to save you so much damage. So much unneeded damage. Just enjoy the wait. All right, let's just pray. Let's pray for everyone right now. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for your will for us. May we walk away. May 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 we finish this service today remembering that you have prepared before us a plan that is designed specifically for us. We just ask that you'll send your Holy Spirit to help us be patient. Help us to not lean on our own understanding but to trust you. Because, Lord, we know your ways are higher, your thoughts are higher. Father, we just ask for any new ventures headed our way. May that be business, or may that be friendships, or may that be life partners. We just ask for the wisdom to be able to discern between what is in line with your will and what is not. And anything that's not in line for your will, God, I just ask that you give us the strength to be able to close that door. Some of you right now, maybe you're too comfortable. Maybe you feel it's not right, but you're drawn to the temporary pleasure. But in Jesus' name, I just ask that I I just pray for strength so that you can overcome. So that you can go back into that race that God has designed you for, that God has prepared before you. May the goodness of his will come upon your life and may you be sincere with God and wait in his timing. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your love and we thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so that was just a message for me today. I hope you got something out of that. I mean, I know I did. I actually had prepared a completely different topic today and I was so excited for it. But then a couple of days before, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and he said, the you, and then I couldn't, figure, I couldn't put my finger on it. And I felt like the Spirit was pushing me to talk to this person I knew who was a youth member. And so I did, and I was talking to them. and didn't ask them, oh, what should I preach on? I was just talking to them. And then they started addressing all these topics to me. And then I felt a burden in my heart that, wow, there are actually so many of us who go through this daily. I've been through so many relationships and had I known this before, well, I I did, but had I been reminded before, I would have made different choices. Because all of that pain that I went through, all of the pain that you went through was never intended for you. I feel like I kept repeating that throughout the home, but it's important for you to remember. All that pain damage was never, never, ever, ever intended for you. Seek his will and decide, am I going to start this? Or am I going to wait and let God bring me someone? Let God start a friendship for me. Let God start a relation for me. Because trust me, whatever he sends you is going to be far greater than whatever you think is right at the time. All right. We're going to finish with worship. But after worship, my husband's going to come up and do a closing prayer and lead us into an offering message. Thank you, everyone.
you for the message and we thank you for your presence in our homes and wherever we are, Lord. And we just thank you that you're always with us. You will never leave us and you'll never forsake us. And we give you praise and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow, I'm so blessed by that message. And I pray that each and every one of you will be blessed as well. And I thank you. Big thank you to my wife, Moselle, for preaching an awesome message. And I just want to invite each and every one of you to open your hearts as we come into our offering session. Obviously, we can't give physically, but if you're moved to bless the work of God, if you're moved to bless the church, as the church is now blessing so many people in need, you can transfer through mobile banking or through internet banking or whatever it is. The account number will be on the screen. And just believe when you are a blessing, God is going to make blessing rain on you. Because we, we are becoming channels of His blessing. And I believe the, the blessing will never run dry. Because as we sow the seed, as we give, I believe God will continue to bless us. So let me just pray for that. And let me just pray to end this online service today. God, we just thank you. And we give you praise. We give you thanks. And I pray that every seed, every offering that is going to be offered unto you, I pray that it will be useful for the kingdom of God. It will help a lot of people. And they will be blessed. And I pray for people who, for your people, Lord, who, who would sow that seed, who would give that offering. I pray that your blessings, your mercies, your goodness will always flow in their lives in Jesus' name. I pray that no harm comes to them. They will be protected. That you will continue to reveal great things in their lives and their families. And finally, Lord, I speak blessing, I speak peace and strength over each and every person watching this. I pray that your will will be manifested in their lives and your power will be shown in their lives. And I pray that Jesus will be the center of their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So once again, we thank you for joining us today and we hope you're blessed. And we'll be praying for you this week that God's favor will continue to be in your life and that you and your, fr uh, your fa friends and family will be blessed and protected through these times. We love you. God bless. Bye-bye.